coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. I'm shaking there with this fever, but I've been declaring I'm healed. If you're healed, get up. Take, your, take that blanket off and get up, somebody who's watching me. Get up and go to the kitchen and have something to eat. But I don't feel like it. It's not what you feel. The paralytic didn't feel anything in his legs, but he arose. And as he arose, as actions happened first, manifestations took place next. My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always, in every prayer of mine, making request for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene, and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Fresh Dew is a program designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and give you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Today on Fresh Dew, we conclude miracle number four. We've been looking at the healing miracles of Jesus. This is miracle number four, the healing of the paralytic part seven. And this is the final part of miracle number four. Miracle number one was the healing of the leper. Miracle number two, the healing of the centurion's servant. Miracle number three was the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. So many lessons packed into these miracles. And miracle number four is the healing of the paralytic, or the, yeah, the healing of the paralytic. So this is part seven. We're taking it from three texts, Matthew 9, 2 to 7, Mark 2, 3 to 12, and Luke 5, 18 or 19 to 7, to 26. So let's read Matthew 9, 2. So he got into a boat and crossed over and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes and Pharisees said within themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk, or arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God who had given such power to men. Mark 2, 1 to 12. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. 
And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose. Immediately he arose, took up the bed and went out in the presence of them all so that all were amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. So what are the points we've looked at so far? Remember they all begin with the letter R. So do you remember them? The first one, realize that Jesus is always present in the house to heal. Jesus is present right now in this house called Fresh Dew for you to be healed. He's not here to decorate the set. He's not here as a piece of furniture in the spirit. He's here to heal you. So always realize that Jesus is present in the house to heal. Second was reach out for your support system. The paralytic had a support system. Three, rely on your faith. He had a support system, but he had faith. Four, refuse to give up. They broke through the roof. They did what they needed to do to get to Jesus. Refuse to give up. Don't get frustrated in your journey of healing and refuse to give up. Glory be to God. Five, relax. Jesus has an answer to every opposition. Don't go trying to fight opposition with your own sense. Jesus has an answer. And the answer is in the word. It's in what he said to the opposition, even while it was still in their hearts. And six, resist the root of the problem. And we thoroughly dealt with this last episode. Resist the root of the problem for Jesus has already dealt with it. Well, the seventh and the seventh point, there's still one more, but we'll deal with both today. The seventh point is respect the force of action. Respect the force of action. Again, let's look at what Jesus did. He said to him, Matthew, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And he arose and departed. For Mark, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. He arose, took up his bed and went out in the presence of them all. And in Luke, yes, we see it as well. I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Okay? You know, we've, we've gone through the story of the paralytic and we've seen his faith in stages. But this is the clincher. This is what he needed to do. If we went to the door to try to get, into, to get to Jesus, went off the roof and finally got to Jesus, Jesus saw their faith, the support system. He looked at him. If he refused to arise, he would not have been healed. You must respect the force of action, child of God. He doesn't say, be healed and arise. God never tells you, be healed and arise. He tells you, arise and be healed. There's a difference. I'll say it again. God doesn't tell you, be healed first and then arise. He said, because that's what makes sense. The guy is paralyzed. There's no feeling in his legs. He can't walk. How do you tell a man who can't walk to arise? But that's the way it goes. Arise and then take up your bed, go to your house, like healed people do. It doesn't say be healed first and then arise. And that's what many of us want. And that's why we miss this clincher, this thing that takes it home, the force of action, actions that make no sense. What if the paralytic said, okay, I will arise, now let me check my, my let me start from my, my, my waist. Okay, they said something was broken in my waist. Okay, there's some feeling in my waist, all right. I can feel it moving, moving. It's moving down my thighs. Okay, yeah, we're getting there. 
Yeah, I can feel it moving, moving, moving. The, oh, I don't feel it anymore. Oh, he's still paralyzed. It's not by what you feel. The word said, arise and be healed. So he arose. As he arose, there was strength in his legs. As he took the step, actions first, manifestations next. That's the way faith works. Actions first, manifestations next. Many of us want, we pray, pray, pray. We stay in the place of prayer, waiting for manifestations, thinking then we can then act. No, no. You arise and be healed. Not to be healed and arise. Look at from James 2, 17 to 18. And I'm reading from the TPT. Listen to this translation. So then faith that doesn't involve action is phony. It's fake. Fake faith. What's fake faith? Like fake news. It's faith that doesn't include action. It's that simple. Do you have phony faith? You have phony faith if you are not acting. Glory be to God. Faith that doesn't involve action is phony. But someone might object and say, one person has faith and another person has works. Go ahead then and prove to me. Go ahead then and convince me, he's saying, that you have faith without works. And I'll show you faith by my works as proof that I believe. Don't worry, this is so powerful. I'll show you faith by my works. By my, by my getting up from the bed, I'm shaking there with this fever. But I've been declaring I'm healed. If you're healed, get up. Take, your, take that blanket off and get up, somebody who's watching me. Get up and go to the kitchen and have something to eat. But I don't feel like it. It's not what you feel. The paralytic didn't feel anything in his legs. But he arose. And as he arose, as actions happened first, manifestations took place next. Glory be to God. Faith is involved in the force of action. The action that will unlock your miracle. Child of God who's watching. You're not waiting for God. God is waiting for you. God is waiting for you. The action that will unlock your miracle must be an action of faith and not a computation of a logical or reasoning mind. The action that will unlock your miracle must be an action of faith and not a computation of the logical or natural mind. Let's read the definition of faith from the Bible. Hebrews 11.1 1, from the Amplified. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of all the things we hope for. Being the proof. Faith is the proof. And we've said here, faith that doesn't involve action is phony. So when you hear faith, don't think faith floating around in the air. No, you, he says, I will show you my faith by my actions. So it says here, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their, rea of their reality. Faith, perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. The paralytic perceived as real fact that he was healed and his sins had been forgiven. So he arose. His senses he didn't record feeling in his legs first, but he arose. Glory be to God. From the Phillips. Now, faith means putting our full confidence in the things we hope for. It means being certain of things we cannot see. Glory be to God. I remember, you know, when my baby, my second baby was born, and some of you have heard this story before. She stopped breathing at birth. And after she stopped breathing, God intervened and brought her back. You know, the doctors were able to do something. But she had turned blue and stopped breathing at birth. And, you know, when they now checked her up, they said her heart was faulty, so valves were all messed up, her blood was all messed up, and they needed to do a heart surgery. So they wanted to keep us in the hospital till then. And I said, no, we want to go home. No, you can't go home. This baby is really sick. You can't do that. I insisted on going home. I don't recommend that to you. That was our faith. My husband was to leave, leave me in the country where we were and come back to Nigeria where we live. We now had to have a discussion. Do you postpone your trip and wait for this surgery? Or do we believe that she's healed? Therefore, there will be no surgery. So go back to Nigeria. Because if there was surgery as a young mom, I wouldn't want to have been left alone. So we had that conversation. So they seed or two by faith. And we decided, you know what? We believe this girl is healed. So let's stay with our plan and go back home. So he went back home and I stayed 
with the baby for her to grow old enough for us to go back home. And we had to go back for this checkup. Bear in mind that when I had to leave the hospital, I was asked to do, you know, CPR on a baby doll to learn how to do CPR because her heart was expected to stop since I took her home because her heart was bad, according to them. So I went back home with her, came back in two or three weeks for the checkup for her to then be big enough to have the surgery. And long story short, they went through so many checks. They did the ECGs up and down, called different doctors. I'm summarizing the story. At the end of the day, the doctors said her heart was perfect and they could not believe it was the same baby they had seen two to three weeks before. And they had told me that even if we did that surgery, we would have to go back to the United States every six months to have a checkup for till she was like 13 or 14. We'd have to keep doing that six months upgrade on the, on the surgery that they did. But what happened? God stepped in and she was signed out, released, and her file closed in that hospital that day. Part of what triggered that was her actions. My husband went back home and I took her home and I never had to do CPR on her because her heart never failed. Glory be to God. Faith without corresponding action is not faith. It's phony faith. Actions first, manifestations next. Say that after me. Actions first, manifestations next. Say it again. Actions first, manifestations next. Somebody's got a back pain. You need to get up and bend down and touch your toes. Actions first, manifestations next. Somebody who's got an ulcer needs to go and find something normal to eat. All that bland food you've been eating. Actions first, manifestations next. And God will let you know what to do. You will get a prompting from the Spirit of God. Your action may not be my action, but actions first, manifestations next. Don't wait for signs. Don't wait to look healed. Don't wait to feel healed. Just arise and be healed. It's a conscious decision to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. It's be healed and arise. <laughs> it's not be healed and arise, rather. It's arise and be healed. Prepare and conceive. Not conceive. And okay, when I see I'm pregnant, then I can begin to prepare for my baby. No! Prepare and conceive. Arise and be healed. Glory be to God. Actions first. Manifestations. The child of God is actually counterintuitive, but you must be spiritual to know what to do and when to do it. Let me read what I wrote here. No pressure. Nothing to prove. The only pressure should come from the double force of the word and the spirit. So don't go jumping up and doing actions because you saw somebody else doing it. No, the Holy Spirit will prompt you. You will know what to do. You will know when to do it. No pressure, but pressure from the word and pressure from the spirit. But when that pressure hits, release your faith by your action. Glory be to God. Release your faith by your action. Again, I remember when, you know, I was on oxygen at one point. You know, I was in a place with my husband in an apartment and we'd just been, you know, gone to the hospital and I had this oxygen tank I was wired on and I just kept declaring the word, declaring the prophetic word and the healing word over myself. But I really couldn't walk outside without the oxygen tank. And if I had to go out with my husband, I would carry the tank, he'd put it in the car and I'd have to stay in the car. So if he went to the mall, I would stay in the car because I didn't want to walk around the mall with an oxygen tank and be identified that way. But you know, I had to stay in the car with the tank. I couldn't walk around. And one day I was in the house just declaring the word and just what I'm talking about here, it hit me. What are you doing then on this oxygen? If you are healed, if it says that you walk and not be weary, run and not faint or whatever, I just kept declaring that to myself. And I said, whoa, it hit me. And I yanked off the oxygen. I was in the house alone and I began to run and run and run around the house. And, and normally if I took two or three steps without the oxygen, I'd be flat out and wheezing and gasping and my lungs about to explode. But that didn't happen because I got that hit and I took, took it immediately, acted on it. And then my husband was coming back. I'd run around the house like four times and he was coming back and I took the oxygen and I put it back. And when he came into the house, you know, he said, how are you doing? I said, well, I'm doing fine. He said, oh, oh you know, you are healed. You just began to bless me. I said, something happened four times when you were not here. Oh, something happened to you four times. What happened? What happened? So it happened four times. He said, what happened? I said, in fact, it's about to happen again. So oh, what is it? What happened? 
and I yanked off the oxygen again, and I ran around the house, and he took his cell phone, I was chasing me around the house, and you know, what's going on, what's going on? And from that day, I could then go out with him in the car, come out without the oxygen, and actually walk slow baby steps at first, but actually walk out and move around with him. Glory be to God. Sometimes you need to grab that prompting. You need to know when God wants you to do what he wants you to do. And many times it takes you a notch higher in your journey of healing. Glory be to God. So it's counterintuitive. The right action of faith will release your miracle in the presence of witnesses. The Bible says he arose, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of them all. The same people who'd seen him paralyzed are the same people who saw him arise and be healed. And they're the same people who witness and testify to your healing. The same people who've taken care of you on the sick bed. The same people who've prayed with you and believed with you. In the presence of them all, when you grab that opportunity that the double force of the word and the spirit give to you, and you know when to arise and be healed. You know when to take that step of faith. You know when to go buy your baby clothes. You know when to get up from that bed. You know when to eat that thing they said you could not eat. When that prompting comes, and you will know by the spirit of God, then you arise and grab it and be healed. Glory be to God. So respect the force of action. And the last thing is release the glory of God. Glory be to God. Isn't it exciting that all our points begin with letter R? Release the glory of God. Matthew 9 verse 8 says, Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God. Mark 2 12 says, I all were amazed and glorified God, saying we never saw anything like this. And Luke 5, again, we see 25, says, Immediately he arose before them and took up what he had been lying on, glory be to Jesus, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Sickness and disease do not glorify God in any way. Don't let anybody deceive you. Oh, God, take glory in this sickness. Nah, he takes glory in healing. He takes glory in strange, strange miracles. He takes glory in paradoxes, things that don't make sense happening in your body. That's what he takes glory in, child of God. That's what glorifies God. So release the glory of God when you take your healing. Release the glory of God when you believe him. Release the glory of God when you understand that Jesus has taken care of sin and sickness at the same time. And you arise and be healed. Release the glory of God. God, paradoxes are what release the glory of God. Sickness and disease do not. Let me end with this prophecy that God gave to us when I first preached this message in church. Listen to this. For my glory is released, says God, not in sickness and disease. <laughs> For there is no glory in sickness. There is no glory in disease. My glory is released in your healing and in your health. My glory is released when miracles happen in your life. My glory is released when strange healings triggered by your faith happen. So release my glory, says God, for the world to see. Release my glory for the world to enjoy and believe what I can do. I want you well, child of God. He wants you well. That's what he says here. I want you well. I want you healed. I want to see you functioning 100% the way I intended you to function. Build your faith and release my glory. Step out in faith. You have my spirit. You have my spirit. You know what to do. You will know when to do it. You see the way I deal with you individually in every area of your life is the same way I deal with you individually with your healing. What I may ask you to do may not be what somebody else did, but it will always make a demand, make a pull on your faith. So arise and be healed and release my glory. Arise and be healed and release my glory, says the Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for we arise even now. Thank you, Father, for actions of faith triggered by your word and your spirit. Thank you, Father, for healings in our bodies. Thank you for kidney stones disappearing. Thank you for livers getting healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you for heart palpitation getting restored back to normal. You said I want you functioning 100% the way I intended you to function. Thank you for that heart is functioning perfectly in the name of Jesus. Thank you for growths disappearing. Thank you for we 
arise and we are healed. Thank you for we see ourselves the way you see us, the healed of the Lord. We give you praise for your healing presence. We give you praise for your healing power. Thank you, Father. We worship you. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today, he's waiting for you with arms open wide. And he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.